What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 31st of May in 2019 in terms of my trades. And we're also going to jump in to the latest drama regarding kind of the global aspect of things right now in terms of Trump and Mexico. We got some threats from Trump that he's looking to put tariffs on Mexico now, guys. Yes, you heard me right. Trump is looking to put tariffs on Mexico. This is like the last thing people in the stock market wanted to hear. And yes, it is happening right now. We're going to talk about briefly what is going on with that situation, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did well today, ones that I'm watching, and kind of my mindset, my mind frame here, heading into the stock markets in the next couple of weeks here. So before we do get into the video, if you guys enjoy the content, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And let's just hop right into it, guys. We have a lot to talk about in this video video. So the S&P 500 with about eight minutes left to the market close today is down 33 points. And this is mostly, again, in my opinion, due to this tariff situation now with Mexico, right? Down 1.21% as of right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 315 points, down 1.26%. And the NASDAQ is doing the worst out of the three indexes that we track on this channel, down 110 points, down one5 percent. So let's talk about very quickly what is going on right now with Trump and with Mexico. So we all know by now Donald Trump, the president of the U.S., he is very against illegal immigration, right? He's very against people from Mexico coming into the United States of America illegally. They're taking away jobs. This is what he's saying, right? They're taking away jobs from the American people. He's also saying on Twitter, he went on a rant today about them bringing in people from Mexico, bringing in an exuberant amount of drugs, narcotics, into the country as well. And this is really why he's been wanting to build this border, this big wall. You guys all know about this, right? And we got news today. And let me read this straight off this article. And what Donald Trump was saying to uh, for Mexico or for him to avoid, you know, putting these tariffs on Mexico. And this is not a trade dispute, by the way. This is simply tariffs just because of immigration, right? This is not a trade dispute. So this is a quote here. The path to not putting tariffs on Mexico is if Mexico puts in effort to reduce illegal immigration at the border, right? This is his this is his biggest goal right now, right? He does not want these illegal immigrants to come and for them or for and for Trump to not put the tariffs on. He wants to see some type of effort from Mexico to try and stop the illegal immigrants Immigration, right? And this is the tariff breakdown here um, of how many tariffs he's looking to put on over these next couple of months if Mexico doesn't really comply and if Mexico doesn't really, you know, put in effort to try and stop this illegal immigration. Let me let me tell you guys this. This is going to get crazy right now, right? So Part of that uncertainty was driven by the rushed rollout of the policy, which would impose at first a 5% tariffs, uh, tariff on imports from, from Mexico on June 10th, which is about 10 days away from when I'm recording this video, okay? In, and then that tariff will increase to 15% then to 20%, and then to 25% in August, September, and October, respectively. So if there's no effort for Mexico, pretty much, guys, Trump is looking to impose a 25% tariff by October. So that is absolutely unbelievable, right? This is something that, in my opinion, the stock market does not need right now because we all know about, you know, the trade war between Trump and China, right? Now there's going to be a war between Trump and and Mexico, this is just not what people need. This is causing more uncertainty, more panic, hence why the stock market is falling like crazy right now, and hence why 
I'm personally maintaining my bearish stance on the stock market here over the next couple of months, right? You all know at this point, well, the new viewers might not know at this point, but long, long term, all of this stuff is just going to be in the history books, right? This is all going to be in the history books long, long term. This probably will most likely not have an effect on the stock market. But short term here in the next year, couple months, two years, maybe even three years, this will definitely have an impact on the stock market, which again is why I'm maintaining my bearish stance here. So, you know, take it how you want it, guys. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. I think this is going to weigh in on the stock market negatively over these next couple of weeks. I would love to know what you guys have to think about that. So let's just break down some technicals very quickly right now on the markets. You know, we all we already know at this point, especially those of you that have been following the channel, following the markets for yourselves, the S&P 500 broke $2,800. We're now looking to get down to the support at about $2,733. We're trading in between this channel of about 70 to 75 points right here. And let's say we have a bloody week next week, which I personally th personally think is very possible due to all this this, this stuff that's going on, all this craziness that's going on, we break that level of support at 2733. The next spot we're looking to go to is going to be at around 2690 for the S&P 500. And if we're looking at these smaller time frame charts right now, a lot of the same with um, in terms of what we were talking about in yesterday's video and the previous past couple of videos, right? Downtrend is still intact. Moving average crossovers to the downside, the bearish cross, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. Moving averages are acting as resistances. We got to a lower low today. The uptrend or the downtrend rather has just been continuing and it's just a lot of the same guys you know the market right now is very very iffy it's falling it's falling it's falling no signs of a reversal whatsoever from what i'm seeing right here the dow jones industrial average you know a lot of the same but today actually marks a day where the Dow ended up breaking a very critical level of support at around $25,000 and we're now trending into the $24,000 level for the Dow Jones and we're trading in this channel between $24,500 and about $25,000 around a 500 point window. So if the bloodiness continues next week like I personally think it will or, or over the next couple of weeks, you know, we're definitely going to be testing this level right here at about $24,500 unless miraculously, which again, I doubt will happen. We come to a trade deal with China. Everything just magically repairs itself, which again, it's just not likely at this point, guys. I think we're going to continue to drop here. That's my personal opinion on the Dow Jones. And again, just like we talked about yesterday and the day before, and the day before, you know, the Dow is still in a downtrending pattern, right? 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, that's a bearish cross. Moving averages are acting as resistance levels, you know. It's just a lot of the same. The stock market has just been beaten, beaten down, and there goes the closing bell. And it seems like we dropped even further, guys. It ended up closing at about 1.41%. It's just not, not great times right now, guys. Not great times in the stock market. You know, the five-day, five-minute, a lot of the same. Dropping, dropping, dropping. Lower lows, lower highs. The downtrend is there. So, Dow ended up closing down 354. Let's see where the SPX closed down about 36 down in the red, 1.32% to be exact here. The NASDAQ ended up closing down 1.63%. So we got that pretty solid dump here in the past five minutes in the overall markets. And the NASDAQ today actually broke a very critical level of support that we were talking about in yesterday's video and that I was watching throughout the day and throughout the past couple of weeks, that level being 7,200. We talked about how that was a resistance back in the beginning of November, resistance back in the beginning of March. We broke out of that level of resistance, making it a new support. And now we're finally trending below that level. So it's time for me to draw the next level of support right now. Let me see if I can find it on the naked eye right now. Um... 
Okay, seems like we're actually right at it right now. $7,130 was a resistance level from back in the beginning of uh, December in 2018. We peaked there, then dumped, and that's where roughly, exactly, honestly, where we ended up closing today. So next week, if we have a bloody week, we break that level of support at around 7130 We may be heading down to about 7030 which is about 100 points lower from where we are right now. And taking a look at the 20-day, one-hour chart, we're downtrending a lot of the same. No need to talk about this too much, guys. Again, bearish cross is intact. Lower lows, lower highs, all of that jazz. So, you know, markets, guys, they're very iffy right now. And again, like I've said a hundred times during this video, I think the markets are going to continue to fall. I'm bearish right now. And it's just pretty much just because of this whole Mexico thing now. You know, this is like the this is like a thing that we just did not need to happen right now, guys. We just did not need this to happen for a market recovery. Literally, it came at a at, at a bad time, and it, it's just it's just knocking down the stock market even further um, down alongside with the China the trade war. You know, everything is just not good right now. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of just you know bad stuff going on. So I personally think. Yeah, markets are going to continue to drop here. So let's talk about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. This day, I actually traded something that I haven't traded in a long time, and I don't think I've ever talked about it on this channel, and that is SP. S or SPXS. And this is actually a 3X leverage ETF that trades based on the S&P 500. So this is a direct S&P 500 um, ETF play, right? We have the SQQQ and the TQQQ uh, inverse ETF combo, which is, a, which is a direct play on the NASDAQ, the SPXS and the inverse, which is the SPXL. These are direct plays on the uh, the S&P 500. And we can see here, you know, with the dump on the S&P today of about 1.3%, take a look at how much the SPXS ETF ended up coming up, guys, 3.9%. If you guys do the math, 1.3 times 3, that's 3.9%, right? Hence why it is a 3x leveraged ETF. It's leveraged based on the S&P 500 to go up three times what the SPX, the S&P 500 is going down. So I was pretty much in and out of this one today. I was watching the markets um, pretty closely, actually, and we had a little run-up uh, this morning, actually, at about 11.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take a look at where the SPX was at at this point. It was right under a moving average resistance, and I noticed the rejection and the constant rejection under that 180 SMA here on the intraday chart. So we gapped down heavily, guys, very heavily from where we closed yesterday. 27.87 is where we closed. We gapped down and we opened about 20 points below that level. And the futures last night, I didn't mention this before, but if you guys were watching the stock market futures yesterday, they dumped very, very heavily. And I believe this was actually right after the, uh, the tariff situation with Mexico. That's what caused this drop this morning. Then we got down to about a low of 27.50. We had that run up. And at this point in time, guys, I was just waiting for an entry on one of these bear ETFs, guys, because I knew my gut was telling me I didn't think the market was going to recover. There's just too much bad news, uncertainty. I think and I thought during the day today that this run up was opening up a margin on one of these bear ETFs like SPXS you know, SQQQ, these ones that we play when the markets are going up. So I noticed the setup here. And once we started to get rejected by that 180 SMA, I figured this was a perfect entry point. And this is one of those days, guys, this doesn't happen a lot of the times where the trade ended up playing out beautifully. I got in at the right time. I literally got into SPXS. Literally, once we started to get rejected here at about 11.30, about 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you guys see SPXS, you know, as the SPX was running up during that time period, this was opening up that margin of profit of about 1.8 to roughly 2% from the high of the day. So we got the dip. That's when I started to buy in once we were 
for getting rejected by that 180 SMA on the SPX index. And from there, I simply just wrote it up and ended up selling off for not a crazy profit, not a crazy profit. I got in, I believe, at $23 or $22 rather and 30 cents. And I ended up riding it up about 0.6%, 0.7%. And that was the trade that I made today, guys. If I had held for the rest of the day from $22.30, Let's say I held it all the way to the end. I probably would have made about a 1.4, uh, you know, 1.3, 1.4 profit. But guys, I talk about this a lot on the channel. I'm not looking to get every single percent of profit here. I'm not looking to grab everything. I'm one of those traders. I'm one of those guys that's looking to grab a profit, right? A small profit and be consistent with grabbing my profits. I'm not too greedy. I don't want to come in here and try to get as much money as possible, as much profit as possible, because you can really get burned doing that. When I'm up in the green, when I see, you know, the, the some indicators telling me, okay, it might be time to, to sell in terms of this RSI, you know, it was getting overbought. I'm like, okay, I'll sell, take my profits, look for a potential re-entry, and then possibly re-enter at that point, but I never ended up re-entering today. So that's pretty much it for the day, right? 0.6, profit on the SP. Uh, XS here, which is continuing the run up here after hours, guys. And this is really just going to lead me up into, uh, into what I'm watching for this upcoming week, right? I'm watching, take a look at this guy, screenshot it, add this to your watch list, whatever, whatever you want to do. These are the main ones that I'm watching for next week, right? SPXS, SPXL, the bull bear, ETF combo that trades on the S&P 500, SQQQ, TQQQ, those trade on the NASDAQ 100, watching those as well. We have TVIX, UVXY, these are both, you know, volatility ETFs here that, you know, really trade on the VIX and do very, very well when the overall markets are selling off and when there's a lot of volatility in the market, right? Take a look at TVIX here today. You know, this most likely would have been a better play. I probably should have focused on this because of the margin of profit that was, um, you know, it was higher than the SPXS. But anyway, I'm just showing it to you guys um, here. You can see, you know, this was up 7.7%, right? Most of the move was, you know, overnight. So you probably wouldn't be able to capture all of that if you were to just trade it today. But you guys get the point, right? These go up insanely when the markets are volatile and with everything that's going on, Mexico tariffs, China tariffs, you know, China slapping tariffs on our goods, you know, this is just going to continue the volatility in my opinion. That's just that's just me being quite honest with you all. So let me know what you guys are watching for this upcoming week. Me mostly, again, I'm just watching these market ETFs. I'm not really interested in swing trading anything right now, right? You know, I'm not really interested in swing trading any stocks at all, to be completely honest with you all. And um, that's just me being honest, right? Sure, as the market continues to fall, there are some opportunities for long-term investments, some that I've been personally looking at, you know, some dividend aristocrat plays, you know, um, I've been I've been adding money into uh, AT&T recently, you know, T, this one was down 4%. I didn't buy any today. I was about to, but I want to see what ends up happening next week. If we dip down to the 29 level, that could be a spot where I start to, you know, buy some more AT&T, right? This is a stock that yields. I haven't checked it in a while, but it yields roughly like 6% right now in terms of the dividend. I haven't checked exactly what it is, but I'm at the point right now where I'm funneling a bit more money, but I'm a majority cash right now, to be honest with you all for my long-term portfolio, but I am funneling some money, not a lot of money, not a crazy amount of money, not a big percentage of my uh, you know cash amount, but it is a decent amount into some of these dividend aristocrats, right? I've been looking at adding money into T here. You guys can probably see my long-term investment watch list here. You see McDonald's. I'm not looking to uh, buy into McDonald's at these levels quite yet. It's pretty high for my liking. You know, MO, the tobacco stocks in general, guys, you know, Philip Morris, um, Altria, these have been getting 
cobbled, slaughtered, right? Just take a look at this. And these offer quite a big yield, right? And this is a dividend aristocrat as well. You know, Altria offers roughly in that same ballpark of around 6-7% um, yield. So this is a spot where I may be adding some more money into over these next couple of weeks as a you know dividend play so my money is just not sitting in cash is kind of working for me and these are stocks that I wouldn't I would like holding long term right so these are just you know some of my thoughts you know my market thoughts what I'm watching again mostly these market ETFs I would love to know what you guys um, are watching you know what are your thoughts let me know down below in the comment section I love interacting with you guys the community we're building here is absolutely amazing and if you guys want to be further connected with our community I have two links down below one of them being the discord group chat and the other one being the facebook group also instagram twitter all that stuff if you want to be connected with me again the community everything is linked down below so if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit that like button again drop a comment subscribe to the channel if you're new i'm really excited for this next week guys i wish tomorrow was monday a lot of the times i'm saying that you know i love trading i love what i do i'm just so excited guys i'll catch you all in the next video, peace out.